Father. In the matchless and mighty name of Jesus, amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We have everything going on here today in the conference line, Facebook Live, amen, and Zoom, amen. Glory to God. Amen. For those that can hear me, amen, in any particular place that you are, can I get a hallelujah from you? Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Good morning, Evangelist Outlaw. God bless you this morning. I'm glad to hear you, see you. Actually, I can't hear you, but I, 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 I'm assuming that you can hear me, amen. And if you can, that's all right. I like you. You're looking wonderful. God has been blessing you. You look like you look like you got the shining star. Everything else. Uh oh. Uh oh. Hallelujah. For those that ain't on Zoom, y'all need to go over here because you know I I I yeah I might not. I don't need y'all to be looking at all my evangelists because their husbands and stuff might get y'all, but they be looking all pretty. I just want to let y'all know that. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Amen in the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, right now for your name, Father God, in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus. I thank every individual, Father God, who will come upon this line, Father, that they will have their way in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus. We thank God for you. We thank God for the things around you. We thank God for what you're getting ready to do in our lives. God, we ask you that you help us, hold us, and keep us right. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to all those who are on Facebook. Good morning to those that are on the line amen glory to god hallelujah thank you jesus glory to god hallelujah glory to god hallelujah your 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 voice should be in by now right now amen glory to god so say amen Glory to God. It, it's, it's showing up as you're speaking. So, amen. Something's going on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm so glad about it because I can see your microphone working. And if you can see mine, it's all right. Amen. I, glory to God. I'm, I'm going to just press the button that says, all right. So, I just unmuted everybody. So, I hope that I unmuted you. You'll be all right. Amen. Amen. Oh, I hear your voice. Amen. That means I done did something right on my end. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Good morning, Claudia T., for being with us this morning. Amen. We thank God for you for being with us on Facebook. Amen. Glory to God. And for all those that are, are with us and amen around, amen. Glory to God. Thank you, God. We thank you. Glory to God. We thank you for being with us. Sister Finn, uh, amen. Glory to God. We appreciate you for being on here. And we love you so, so, so much. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. We thank God for all those <clears throat> that are on Facebook, all those who are on the conference line, and all those that are with us. Amen. Somebody give me some glory. Amen. 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 I hope everybody is feeling okay. Amen. I know that situations have have caused any every individual to move around to do some things. We're all all kind of social distancing away. Amen. For some of you who have probably never had to experience some of this as far as church is concerned, understand that we're a church without walls. We feed our faith and doubt will starve. We've been um online for almost four or five years amen doing exactly just this amen so glory to god if you ran across us it's not because of accident it's because god has pushed you in this direction amen so that you could see us and we can give you something i guarantee you today that i truly have a word for you 
I have a word for every individual. Amen. Glory to God. And I'm um, hoping that you'll be with me. Amen. On this day. Amen. Glory to God. I uh, wanted to know if um, my sister Anita was on around. Amen. Because I'm, I'm, I'm trying my best to uh, do a few things. But amen. I want to do it like this. I'm going to start my service right now. Amen. And I'm going to get the announcements in and out the way. So just stay with me and be with me as we have these announcements. Amen. For those that are on Zoom, you are only going to see me. For those that are that are on Facebook, amen, you're going to see a, a, a slight little picture, excuse the coloration, amen, it's because of certain things, ah, Sister Bridget is on, which means that Nana is on, and for those that don't know, Nana Gaddy, amen, is 103 years old, she's watching us from our iPad, and I would like to say good morning, Nana, we love you, we love you, we love you. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And I want to get the announcements in and out the way. So, amen. Amen. Just want to let you know that on our Bible study, which is on Monday at 7 o'clock, we have a good time with our own minister, John L. We have our study times at 7 o'clock, and I believe that we're um, in the book of... Um, uh, um, I forgot what book we're in, but I believe we're on the seventh chapter of the book. Amen. Um, near my, um, I want to say Zephaniah, you know, amen. Zephaniah. Zephaniah, the seventh chapter. Amen. We're in that particular book. Thank you, Evangelist Outlaw. Amen. On Tuesdays and Thursdays at seven o'clock, we have prayer. We'll pray for you, with you. And we will continue to pray all the particular times. Amen. And we ask you to come and join us at 7 o'clock. Amen. And the, the number to call is on, on this paper, but is also on our website, www.wordofthelamb.org. Amen. And I want to let you know that every other Wednesday, which means this Wednesday actually coming up, we have a book club where we have a book that we are reading from Allison Golden. I believe the the uh, the book is uh, Murder at the Garage or some of that nature. It is a it is a uh, Christian book with a, a lot a lot of little things in it but it's very very good um we have been enjoying the series and we invite you to come even if you haven't read the book you will truly get to have a good time amen we also want to invite you to friday word friday word is a, a place where we kind of do so many different things but you'll never know exactly what's going on until you tune in on friday we don't announce it, whether it's going to be somebody who is going to be a speaker. It could be somebody who will begin to give poetry. It could be a fact of us having a, a, a raw moment where we're having conversation. And last Friday, we had Friday game night. Amen. And we, you know, so we invite you to come and be with us at all particular times in the name of Jesus. Also every day monday through friday 6 a.m 6 p.m and 12 o'clock noon we have a unity prayer on zoom amen if you would like to be a part of that unity prayer send us an email at word of the lamb at outlook.com and what we do is we'll send you the link to connect up what we are doing is we're uniting as people, no matter what your faith may be, to pray about the situations that are going on and just to strengthen up everybody. We're doing this on a constant way because we need to continue to move in certain areas. Amen. Men always should always pray. With these being said, and those being that, I'm going to turn you back into the hands. And I tell you this, for those that are on Facebook, I promise you that you will see my face in a few minutes. For those who are in, for those who are in Zoom, amen, I will be right with you in a minute. Amen. Glory to God. 
Hallelujah. Oh, and there you go. So you won't have to run now. I know you might have jumped back a little bit. I know you might have been some particular place. But amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. We thank God for each and every one of you. We thank God for Evangelist Diane Hooks for being with us. Amen. I thank God for all those who might be on the conference line. Amen. We thank God for you as well. Amen. We also thank God for each and every individual on Facebook and those that are doing there. And do me a favor. If you are watching us on Facebook, why don't you start a watch party so that individuals who you're connected with will come on in. It'll be like you inviting them to church. Amen. Glory to God. Because the more we need to be together, that's the most important thing. Amen. 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 Father God. In the matchless and mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We give you our glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. We know that all things work in your will. Father, we ask that you move like never before. And Father, we ask you that you have your way. Father, it is because of you that we have the right and the authority. Lord, we ask you right now that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of thy God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen, amen, and amen. Giving honor to God and Jesus Christ, who is the head of my life. Hi. To the pastor and chief overseers of all the areas around us. To each and every one of the exims, meaning Christians, I, with the highest regard and intellectual integrity, I stand before you, I sit before you today to expound and share with you the Rama of the Logo, meaning the written and spoken word of God. Amen. Glory to God. Today i like you to turn your Bibles from first. Oh, we almost forgot. Did you bring your sword with you? For those that don't know what your sword is, the sword is the word of God. Do you have your sword with you? And if you have your sword with you, or if you have your Bible at with you, whichever particular one it is, then we're asking you to turn to the book of Genesis, the sixth chapter, and at the sixth verse, sixth chapter, and stay there at the and stay at the first verse. Don't go to the sixth. Stay at the Stay at the 6th chapter and the 1st verse. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And if you would turn your Bibles to the this chapter chapter of Genesis, the sixth chapter. If you got it, say amen. 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 And read with me, if you will, as we will read from chapter verse, chapter six, verses one through one through nine. Amen. Amen. We will, what I'm going to start as we speak. And it came to pass when man began, began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them. The sons of God saw the daughters of men and they were fair and took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man for that he also is flesh yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years these were there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that when the sons of god came unto the daughters of men and they bare children to to them the same became mighty men which were of old men 
of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and every imagination of thoughts of his heart were only evil continuously. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, it will, I will destroy man who I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping things and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah is a just man and perfect in his generation, and Noah walked with God. Amen. I'd like to talk to you today briefly, Tom. Very briefly, amen. God bless you, Sister Morales, for being with us. Amen. We love you and miss you and glad to see you. I'd like to talk with you briefly today, amen, from just a little bit of something. My title today is Stay in the Grace of God. My title today is Stay in the Grace of God. I will be lifting up the eighth verse, amen, as I will get to it, amen, in the name of Jesus, amen, glory to God. See, Genesis, the sixth chapter in the eighth verse says, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now I went and took an opportunity to go to Webster and I looked up in Webster, what is grace? And of course I found so many things. But I found that grace is unmerited divine assistance given to humans for the regeneration or sanctification. It also says in Webster that uh, it is also a virtue coming from God. It also states that it's a, a state of sanctification enjoyed through divine assistance. Either way, it still comes up with the same thing that there is a sanctification that comes along. Something that is covering you. Something that cleanses you. Something that overflows over you. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, where would I be? Where would I be? Amen. See, I want to let you know something. That there's times when you just can't see your way out of this world. Come on, I want to talk with y'all because we're going through some things in this world right now. And I need y'all to be as honest as y'all can be. Y'all can talk to me. You can, you can talk to me any particular way. Y'all can holler at me. You can speak to me. Y'all can send me some love on Facebook. I like emojis as well. Amen. Can you hear me on Facebook? Somebody say amen if you can hear me. Amen on Facebook. That way I know that I'm tuned in to you. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Where would I be without God? Hallelujah. You best right. You better say that, Sister Morales. Amen. But I want to let you know something. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. There's a times when you can't see no way out. Right? This world seems like it's really tough on you. It's rough on you. It's beating you up. And most people aren't paying attention to the word of God. They're hearing it, but they're not paying attention to the word of God. They know what the word might say, 
but they're still doing what they want to do anyway. It's almost like you're telling your children to go wash the dishes and they say they're going to do it later. But you know when you get back to the sink and they're getting ready and they're already in their bed, the sink is still full of dishes. Now, I don't know where y'all came from, but I know that if that happened to me, my mother and my father got me up in the middle of my sleep and made me go wash the dishes. Because my commitment, my scenario was that I needed to do those things. And sometimes you got to do even some things, even if you've forgotten, you got to come back and do them. See, this world right now that we're in, it's, it's beating us up. It's, it's hurting us in certain ways. It's, 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 it's beating us down in certain areas. It's sometimes making some of us so depressed. We even look forward to even opening up the door. There was times when you could have just... Now I said I could walk outside, but you're now you're happy just to open up the window and stick your head out. That you would pull your shades back just because you would like the sun to come in. And they are always believing that there's some out there that just believe the fact of some certain things that are going on and some people only want to hear the word of God as long as it's tailor-made. What do I mean by that? As long as it fits into their scenario, then it's all right. That anything that is not right with you or doesn't conform to the way that you live, even though the word is telling you the truth, you cut it out. The word is the word. It can't be tailor-made for you. God tailor-made it already. Amen. We're supposed to tailor-make ourselves for the word. Amen. Meaning that there's some things in our lives that we're doing, messing around with different things, moving around strange doctrine, listening to strange people, talking about things that aren't of, aren't of God that will lead you astray. And because of the fact of individuals around there, I wasn't even going in this direction. But it, it, because of individuals around there, you'll get locked into something and you start to say to yourself, I don't even know. I, I'm okay. I don't see nothing wrong with it. But yet the moment that you say that these are going to, to happen or, 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 or get caught up in something, and then you'll say, well, I didn't see that. And the reason why you didn't see it is because you forgot to look in the word. My title today is Stay in the Grace of God. Amen. I'm not here to, 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 to scare you into anything. I'm just here to give you an understanding of something. I just want to give you something that God gave me. And I want to let you know that I, I, we won't be here very long because I know what God is doing. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. In the natural and mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I have to ask you a question. Here's my question to you. Whose grace are you under? Because if you're under the authority of God, then you will be recognizing God. But if you're having some issues and some problems because you don't want to conform to some of the things that God is doing, whose grace are you under? Are you having some resistance? Because in life we have resistance. Everybody has resistance. I don't know another person on this line, including myself, that don't have resistance. That some of the things you say, oh, Lord, these things, boy, I... I, I, I. I, I got to conform to it, but boy, is, is, it, is it tough to conform to it? But yes, you got to be under somebody's grace. Whose grace do you are you under this morning? See, because if you're under the grace of God, then you'll understand that some of the things that, that might be going on in your life, you might have to kind of check back because sometimes you got to understand that have you pulled God and did you pull God into second place or did you put him into first or did you leave him in third? 
stay under the grace of God. See, because if you push God into third place, that means you're out of his graces. He's not your first priority. Some of us, we get up and we, we think about what we're going to eat, what we're going to drink, what we're going to do. But the first thing that you should do when you get up is that you should thank God because it is him that put the breath of life within you. He did not have to do that. Amen. But he loved you so much. But, oh, I, I want to get back to a few things. I want to get back to some things. So I want to let you know a little something. I'm going to bring you in the word and kind of give you a certain thought in your mind. Stay in the grace of God. Amen. See, for I know that even if you're covered under the grace, uh, you've got to understand that there's only one I know, the only one that I know. The only one that I know, and I think evangelists and the evangelists and the people on this line, I think the only ones that you know is that there's only one who can cover you in your mess. Amen. And believe me, we Amen. some messed up people. I might be nice today and have an attitude tomorrow. I might be nice right now and have an attitude later. We all have wishy-washy. We all have some issues, some problems. And I'm going to say that everybody got issues. Amen. And if you say you don't have an issue, amen. you have an issue with having issues. <laughs> you know, amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. Glory to God. Then you still have an issue. <laughs> amen. Glory to God. The first thing we should do is give God some praise. Amen. Glory to God. The so first thing we need to do is give him some things. That's right. Y'all can amen on me. You can be as loud as you want to be. You can praise God like you want to praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. See, we're a church without walls. We got people from all over the place. You just don't even know. You might just be on Facebook, but you don't know all the people who are out here who are members. Amen. They're all across the United States and Puerto Rico. Amen. They are out here. Amen. And they're giving glory to God this morning. And just because you got there, you should give glory to God too. I want to hear somebody say amen. And I want to hear it typed upon their amen. I want to see some kind of somebody giving love. Amen. Can I get some love? Love this morning because God woke you up. Ah, hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. You better think about all he's done for you. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my very soul, hallelujah, cries out, hallelujah. I thank God. I thank God. I thank God. Hallelujah. For saving me. Ah, glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want you to remember, people of God. Stay under the grace of God. The Bible says in Hebrews, the fourth chapter and the 16th verse, let us therefore become boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy, and find grace to help in the time of need. I want you to know that this verse was sitting there, but it must have been for a time like this. Amen. Because I know Amen. that if you are not, I know I'm in need. I know that the other people are in need. I know that there's people who are in need, amen, all over the world. That we need to be coming in the unity of who we are as people of God, as the Christians and the people of God, as the lover of Christ, as the lover of the Holy Ghost, as the lover of God. That we should come together. Hallelujah. It's not a time to sit back. It's not a time to do some things, but it's a time to be prayerful. It's a time to go into the bottom drawer and pull out that 300 watt bulb and pull out the one that you had that's a little bit on a energy efficient side. And it's time to put your 300 watt bulb 
into effect because it's time to let the light of God shine upon you. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. It is the mercy of God that we are trying to obtain. It is the mercy of God that we're trying to obtain. It is the mercy of God that we're trying to obtain. For we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Romans 3, 23 and 24. Reading from the King James Version. We've all sinned. We all fall short of the glory of God. But we're all trying our best to stay in the grace of God. I don't know about you. I don't know what you're doing. I can't tell you what's going on in your world. But I want to tell you about a little something I know. Let's go back and look at Genesis, the sixth chapter, verse eight. Just as eight says, but Noah, and I like y'all to read it with me if you can. <coughs> Excuse me, because I'm in a room that's quite dry right now. It says, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. See, now I want to toe back a little bit and talk about something. You see, there was much going on at that time. So much was going on and people were doing so much sinful things that the Lord said that he was going to destroy man. He was going to destroy the animals and every creeping thing on the earth. He was going to destroy all the sin as they were doing that, that they were doing at that time. But the Bible also tells us that in Genesis the sixth chapter and the eighth verse, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. People, I want to talk to you just a little bit about that. See, people of God, with all that is going on. Mm-hmm. There was one who found grace in the eyes of God. And all that was all going on, he still found the grace. And by him, we were saved. It was because of the grace that God had seen on Noah that all mankind was saved, that all the people were saved, that all the individuals were saved. There was a ark being built, amen, that he had been put before there, but we're not going to go in that direction. I just want to say that it wasn't for the fact of Noah being in this proper place, standing in his proper area, doing what he had to do for God. Amen. There would not be man as we know it because when we had started, maybe God would have started all over again. Each and every one of us has a little bit of the Noah gene in us. We have a little bit of that because he was the last individuals from the area. Him and his wife and his children. Amen. But after the flood, they were the only ones left on the earth. So they were pre able to repopulize and do some things. But see, he found grace and he found mercy and he... And God saw it, but people of God, it's time when his times are bad. When times seem like all hell is breaking loose. Lord, talk about it. When it's times like this, when areas are going on and we are moving in a certain way. Good morning to you, Sister Anita. 
when it seems like your whole world is about to fall in. When it seems like everything that you have done and everything that you thought about doing is not coming up to any way. When it seems like every time that you try to make a good move, there's always some disappointment. When it seems like for every time that you say something, that somebody has something negative to say to you. When it seems like all the rest of the world seems to be wanting to, to yell at you for it to be your fault. Whenever the situations made that you're going through is going on and everybody's saying it's because of something that you did. When you get to an area in your life where it seems like you're trying your hardest but you really don't want to be bothered with people because you seem so getting to be so disappointed. That as soon as they see you, they want to run the other way because they're tired of how you're speaking to them about the word of God. How it seems sometimes that you're turning or people are turning you into other particular ways to try to find some answers. That you'll find out that some people tell you that it's easier to do something else than it is to listen to the word of God. Yeah. See, when you find yourself in those particular things, those times are bad and your 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 money is low and there's no food in the household or there's no food in the store. We're in that scenario now. Where people are fighting over toilet paper and dry goods and people are fighting over places in line and people are just robbing individuals for the most smallest amount of things. All hell seems to be breaking loose. And though all these things are happening, I say to you, stay faithful like Noah. Amen. Amen. See, because if you stay faithful like Noah, you could be the one that God finds grace in in his eyes. Maybe it is because God is getting ready to say, I want to destroy man because man has grieved me to the point, but I found favor, I found grace in the eyes. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. That even in your situations that you're going through, stay faithful, stay strong, stay encouraged. Because no matter what you're going through, the Lord is looking at you. And he said, I found grace in the eyes of you. Yeah. That means I'm going to be with you. That even though you're going through these things, I'm going to let you know that I'm going to show you that even though you're going through it, you're going to get out. You can't see the door by now, but listen to my voice. You can't see the thoughts of me right now, but read me in these words. See, don't give up the fight. Don't give up the fight. Instead, I want you to fight and change your strategy. See, you might have been praying in a certain way, but now it's time to change your strategy on how you pray. Amen. It might be that you're doing a certain thing, but what you might have did way back then might not be working right now. This is actually the time when you actually have to change your strategy. This is the time when you gotta keep praying. This is the time when you gotta keep leaning on the Lord. You gotta keep calling out to Jesus. 
you got to be on your post. Amen. You can't back down. This is the time where you can't take a step. This is the time where you're going to have to make the decisions. This is the time where you got to step and say, this is what I'm going to do, and this is the way I'm going to do it, and I got to stick with it because this way is right, because it's going in the way that God has desired it to be. Yeah. It is a time for you to lean on the Bible. It's also a time for you to push a little harder. It's a time for you to increase your faith. I know that it might be hard in what you're doing. I know that it might not even feel that good in the areas that you're in. I know that it might seem like there's so much going on around you. How can I push? How can I stay faithful when there's so much going against me? But God said that I am your shield and your buckler. And he said that if you would take one step toward him, if you would move in your direction toward him, he said, I will hear you. Glory to God. Stay in the grace of God. Push a little harder. For it is your faith that will make you whole. See, I remember that there was a song that used to be there. No, I won't sing it, but I will repeat a few verses. It says, how did I make it through the years? It said, how did I make it this far? It says, through the valley and over the hills, I know it had to be God. It said, how did I make it through the storm? It says, how did I make it through the rain? He says, if you want to know, <clears throat> it's how I got here. <clears throat> it's so easy to explain. It was God's grace. It was God's grace. As they said, it was God's grace. His amazing grace. See, I made it this far by the grace of God. See, I need you to stay in your grace. I need you to stay in the grace of God. The Bible tells us, for by grace ye are saved. Yeah. Through faith and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, least any man should boast. That's Ephesians, the second chapter, two and nine. People of God, stay under the grace of God. Let the Lord lead you through. Let him take the understanding. Let him take the opportunity to be with you. See, Noah found grace in the eyes of God. Even in the situation where the whole world was about to be destroyed. One man found grace and still was able to hold on to mankind. Your situation might not be that big, but it's big to you. And whatever it is, stay under the grace of God and understand that he will come. He will bless you. He will overflow on you. He will continue to be with you. He will continue to touch you. He will continue to overflow on you. In the matchless name of Jesus. God, I thank you right now. We magnify who you are. Lord, we ask you in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus that you will continue to be with it. Lord, I know right now, God, 
that we're going through some things. There's some problems going on. But Lord, I know that you are more than a conqueror. God, you have set us in a high place. Father, you have let us know right now in the name of Jesus that we shall overcome. Father, you said that I shall overcome because Jesus said that I have overcome the world, so therefore I know that you will too. Uh, I want you to get an understanding of God that if we stay under his grace, there's nothing that won't happen that we can't get out of. We have to stay in the areas that we are. We can't quit. We can't stop. We can't pull back. For the moment that you do those things, you're moving back from God. How are you going to step yourself back in the place that God said I brought you out of? How are you going to move yourself too forward and step ahead of him? Stay under the grace of God so that you would know exactly what he's doing for you. Stay under his shadow so that he can keep you in all ways possible. Yeah, he will enjoy you. Yes, he will strengthen you. Yes, he will overpower you. Yes, he will be with you. Yes, he will connect you. Yes, he will correct you. Yes, he will be with you. And yes, he will show you. Are you willing to be under the grace of God? But I have to ask you a question. I asked you that question earlier. I'm going to ask you that question now. Are you, what grace are you under? Are you under the grace of God? Or are you under someone else's grace? Because someone else's grace will not lead you into the righteousness. It won't lead you into the path of God. It won't lead you anywhere. Matter of fact, it will lead you stuck. It will lead you lost. And for some of y'all, it might even lead you into death. It's definitely for some others will lead you into sin because you want to do what you want to do. But when it comes to a certain part, you'll pour God into a little bit of bottom and mention his name and say, oh, the Lord is with me. But yet you're still doing the same things you're doing. Don't you know that God sees everything you're doing? So what kind of grace are you under? Amen. You're not fooling me. And you're not fooling God. Amen. You will stay where you are, but if you're under my authority and God has given you to you, he's going to show me some things, and either I'm going to talk with you or I'm going to talk with you. Amen. Oh, I want you to know that even if your feelings get hurt, even if you get an attitude. Yes. Even if you feel like you want to just throw the book at every particular body around you. Yes. Stay in the grace of God. Yes. See, because if you stay in that grace, it'll get you where. Because the devil trying to pull you out of your scenario. He wants you to be out there. He wants you to come out of your character so he can say them words to you. See, I thought you wasn't saved. So that he could put it into the mind of some other people. Well, I, I thought you was this. But don't understand now. Don't get this wrong. Because sometimes we come out of our character. And sometimes people say, well, I thought you was this. And sometimes don't get mad at it because it's a reminder to you to say, you know what? I am that. And thank you for the reminder to bring me back to where I'm at. Amen. See, because sometimes... We, we get out of our character because some certain people can pull you out of it. There's certain individuals out here that can make you mad no matter what you eat. They can say that they can only say it can say four words to you and they all could be good. But you could be mad because of how they said it. And we're in a scenario right now where everybody's socially distanced, which means that we're in the households together with people. 
and even everybody in the household, even though we're in the household, we're trying to stay socially distanced because we know that if we stay socially distanced, we won't have the same problems. Because in the, in the world of living, I, I, I know for a fact I'm going to talk about me. I'm only talking about me. I'm not talking about anybody else. I'm going to talk about me. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me get some water. Amen. Amen. I'm going to talk about me. I'm so know that my wife is probably so happy. That I'm in a different part of this particular place that we are in. Because in her mind, I'm sure that she needs to have some peace. And though we love each other all without, without measure, everybody need a break from somebody. Amen. That's why it's good to go out there and step outside. Because if you want to stay in the grace of your family members, yes. you got to have to separate yourself some particular place. Woo. This is also a time where you're going to have to learn to watch your mouth. Yes. Because yes. sometimes you might want to say something and it might be hurtful. Yes. And some things right. people can't recover from. There's certain people in this world you could say something to and you ain't hurting they feeling. They'd be like, oh, well, so what? It's all right. You said it is okay. It ain't bothering me. And there's certain people who you say something to and you might have devastated them. They can't recover. Or it's harder for them to recover. And if it's the truth, the truth will set them free. But it's how you said the truth to them that might might have hurt them in a certain way. You have to be careful on how we speak and how we say things. And I'm only saying that out of, out of I'm, I'm only talking about me. I ain't talking about nobody else on here. I know that when I say some things, boy, I, when I say something, boy, and I, I, and I say something, sometimes it, sometimes it's rough. You know? But I can guarantee you, when we take the opportunity, you'll find a spot. I don't care what it is. Whether you go into your corner and pray. Whether you got to go into the bathroom. Whether you got to go into the basement. Maybe you got to go into the attic. I don't know. Wherever you have to be. I don't care if you're in a, in a, in a one-place apartment where you only have a little bit of room. Maybe you got to find yourself behind the couch. But whatever it may take you to do, to get yourself into a spot where you can let go of some things, I'm giving these things to you that you go ahead and let go of them. And for those that need to yell, that need to scream, there's a thing called silent screaming. That's where you can open up your mouth and you can let out your scream, but nothing comes out. You just, But you can feel the... You can feel the uh, the screen come through, and then you stand at the door and, and open your mouth and and, and and yell without 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 sound. And after you get finished, you'll feel so purged. You close your door, say thank you, Jesus, Lord, forgive me for anything that I have done, said, did, thought, or even dreamed. Yes. And keep it moving, cause we're human and we all have issues. But because we have issues, we need to always do one thing. We need us to stay under the grace of God. Yes. See, it is because of His grace that we are here. And if He moved away His grace, where would you be? I know that when I wasn't in the grace of God, I thought I was living in the world, but everything was trouble. I had more problems, more things going on, more in... It, it, it seems like every time I turned around, it was some kind of trouble I was dodging or I was bobbing I was weaving I was moving whichever way I was just moving my way through so people of God stay under the grace of God stay under his grace because it is through his grace that we are sanctified 
It is under His grace that we have a divine protection. Grace is unmerited divine assistance given to humans for their regeneration or sanctification. It is also the virtue coming from God. It is also the state of sanctification enjoyed through divine assistance, which means God is assisting us by His grace that he's giving us a chance to do a lot of things. And it's the Bible says, by grace are we saved because of him that was rose from the grave. Amen. It's because of Jesus Christ that we have a chance to do a lot of things. But because of Noah, Amen. and because of what Noah was, and because Noah was able to, to do things, God found grace in him. Said that there's something about man that he still loved. Then he saved man, and then a little later he sent his only begotten son. God loves us so much and wants to keep us under his grace so much that he gave his only son to us. If that's not love, what is? And if God loves you so much and wants to keep you under his grace, what's stopping you? from being there. Once again, what grace are you under? Once again, what grace are you under? Stay in the grace of God. Father, I have done what you have allowed me to do. Father, I knew that this would be one of those messages Amen. God bless whoever is on the conference line. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, I've done what you asked me to do. And I knew that it was going to be a fight because it was a fight to, it wasn't a fight to get the message written. But after I had finished, then the attack came. Father, I knew that it was the enemy because only the enemy could cause confusion. But like evangelist Diane Hooks says, hallelujah anyhow. <laughs> Amen. And I kept that in my mindset. And I went to war. See, I had a dream, hallelujah, this morning. And in my dream, everything around me was dissolving. Everything was being moved and melted away. There was nothing left but a few things. And then I heard, build the cabinet build the wall build the house and i went to go get some ply board but the word said make it out of wood and i went to go get the wood and i shown how to build it and i built a wall and i built another wall and I built a wall and then I heard it say, now it's time to put the roof on. And I said, well, Lord, I'm going to get it. And he said, the roof I have. And I realized that it's under his grace. It's like the roof of a house. It covers everything that is in there. Stay under the grace of God. Stay under the grace of God. Father, in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus, if there's any among us right now, Father, who is desiring, hallelujah, to be saved, that they said to themselves, I need to make a change. I need 
to change how I am doing things. And I want to take the opportunity to get to know Jesus. If you are on this line, if you are on Zoom, if you are on Facebook Live, and you're saying, I'd like to be saved, we can't save you. You have to save yourself. But we will give you every tool available so that you will be able to get to where we are desiring to get to. So if you're desiring to get saved, it's nothing but a few words to say. But we are get that to you. As the evangelist will tell you, you can get saved in a grocery store. You can get saved on your way to work, on your way home. You can get saved in a corner store. You can get saved in your household. You can get saved in your bathroom. You can get saved in your kitchen. You can get saved outside on your doorstep. You can get saved right now on this phone line. You can get saved right now on Zoom and you can get saved right now on Facebook. If you're desiring to be saved, we ask you, would you come? If you are desiring to be saved, but you want to get in contact with us, then word of the lamb at outlook.com. Send us an email and we will get back in touch with you. Amen. If by any means that you are been an individual who said, I've been saved and I've just dropped the ball, I haven't done everything I'm supposed to do and I really want to get it right, I've been trying to get back to where I was, well, I'm going to let you know, don't get back to where you were, get back to what God wants you to do. And the only way that you can do that is by taking the opportunity to just do this. Repeat after me if you are dropped the ball and you are trying to get back. Say, Father, I'm a sinner. And Lord, I've known that I've dropped the ball in many a times. Father, I ask you that you forgive me of my sins and forgive me of the things that I have done and all the things that I've I'm doing. Lord, help me in my endeavors, Father, as I move towards you, Father, that you will close every door that does not have to do with you, Father, and that you will open up doors that has to do with you, Father, and give me the strength and the fortitude to be able to walk through them. Father, I ask you for forgiveness. I repent right now in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus. And I ask you that you try me one more time. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory amen. to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Glory, Glory to the name of amen. Jesus. And if you have prayed that, hallelujah, amen. then I guarantee you, hallelujah, that God is pleased by hearing you. Knowing that you're going to continue to make the step. Now, don't just pray that prayer and then go back to doing what you was doing. Amen. See, because that would be wrong and that would mess you up. But what I wanted to tell you also is just this. Stay in the grace of God. Stay Amen. under his protection. Amen. And I want you to get an understanding. That if you are driving in a car, please don't close your eyes. If you are in the passenger side in a car and you trust the driver, then close your eyes. If by chance you happen to be cooking 
step back from the stove, if you got your babies in your hand and you're starting to feel the Holy Ghost, put the babies down. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. But if you are in a position, hallelujah, where God can bless you, amen. If you are in an area, hallelujah, where God can touch you, hallelujah, and you can put your hands together in the way that God will allow you to put your hands together. If you can only bow but just your head, whatever means that you give reverence to God, whether you do it with your head covered, with your eyes closed, your head bowed, yes. with your hands clasped or with your hands open, whatever it may be, we ask you that you do that now. Father God, in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus, yes. Father, we come before you, Father, asking you, Father God, that you will bless us in this way. Lord, we ask you that you keep us under your grace. God, that you will give us the knowledge on how to stay under your grace. And Father, anything that we are doing that is moving us away from it, Father, show it to us. Expose it right now. Give it to us, Father. Show us and give us the wisdom on how to get rid of it. Lord, I thank you right now for all that you have done and all that you're doing. Lord, every individual on this line, Facebook, Zoom, conference line, I ask you that you bless each and every one of them. And Lord, I ask you that you have your way. Father, I ask you that you touch them and their children, their families and their hearts. Lord, anybody who is sick among them, Father, I ask you that they be made whole. In the name of Jesus. Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus that they be made whole, Father. Father, I ask you that you touch entire families, God. And I ask you to send a comfort to the family members who are in need of it, Father. And Lord, I thank you for who you are and whose we are. It is because of you that we have the right and authority. We ask these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, and amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Before I let you go, amen, I want to let you know, amen, glory to God, that um, um, I'm not sure, but um, you can let me know, Evangelist Outlaw, is there, was, is, is there a meeting for the uh, women of WOL? And if it's any time soon, amen. Then, 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 then I would pass that information on right now, Amen. But uh, if not, I believe that the evangelist uh, outlaw will be getting in touch with you, Amen. As far as the the women of uh, uh, W O L and um, the the women's women's group that they have, Amen. It's a wonderful thing, Amen. And if you haven't been a part of it, you should definitely make sure that you're a part of it because it's going to bring forth some wonderful things, Amen. Glory to God. Well, I want to know if all minds and hearts are clear or is there anything that needs to be said or talked about. Amen. Amen. Well, glory to God. I give glory and think, give God bless you to Sister Anita and, sis, and Brother Steve. Amen. Being safe in South Carolina. Evangelist Outlaw being safe up there in the upper state of Connecticut. Amen. Evangelist Diane being safe in New York City. Amen. And to Amen. my friend Doris Finn, hallelujah, being safe in the middle of Hartford. Amen. To Sister Bridget, who's Amen. being safe in Hartford. Amen. And to Nana Gaddy, who we love you. We love you, Nana. We love you. 103 years old. Amen. We love her with all hearts and for those for Claudia T and for Sister Morales, amen. God bless you and we bless you keeping you safe, amen. Glory to God and every individual around there, hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We're giving blessings to them and we bless even the apostle Reggie Ranson, amen. Glory to God and his first lady Debbie, amen. God, you give 
honor to him and the apostle sessions apostle cherry and we again bishop cherry and bishop wyatt amen we continue to bless each and every one of them and we ask you that you continue to be with them in jesus's mighty name we will be letting you go amen glory to god we bless your name we thank god for each and every one of you amen we're a church without walls we feed your faith and doubt will starve amen we have bible study on monday and you should come and join us as we do have a good time amen we get deep into the bible Amen. You can ask any question that you want to ask. There's no silly questions. There's no funny questions. And every question we'll answer. And if we don't answer it, somebody on the line will. Amen. Or we'll look it up. Uh, if it's that good of a question, we'll have it back for you on the next week as homework. Amen. Glory to God. And our Tuesdays and our win uh, Tuesdays and our, our Thursdays, we have prayer. Amen. We want you to be involved. Come on and pray with us. Amen. This Wednesday, we have our own book club by Sister Anita. Amen. We have a good time at the book club, don't we? Amen. We have a good time at the book club. And we want to make sure that we continue to be around each other. In the meantime and in between time, we are letting you go. And in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus, you are truly dismissed. Thank you for being with us at Word of the Lamb Ministries. We love you and we... Hope that you will always be with us. God bless you on Facebook. God bless you.